So what do you think of when I say the word moonshot? A moonshot, according to the dictionary, is an act of launching an aircraft to the moon, like the Apollo 17. Or in baseball, when a player hits a massive home run out of the park. That was a moonshot. So let's take it one step further. What is moonshot thinking? Moonshot thinking is when you choose to be bothered to solve one of the world's most pressing problems in the world by using, with an audacious project, using disruptive technology. And I'm here today, my name is Susanne Baers, and I'm a neuroscientist, entrepreneur specialized in genomics. And I'm here to talk about my moonshot. And what I'm extremely passionate about is transforming today's localized healthcare systems into one hyper-connected global world. Previously, my work has been acknowledged. I won the 2019 Access to Healthcare Award by Sandoz in the USA. I'm appointed One Young World Ambassador in Den Haag and acknowledged by NASA as Young Game Changer. And I'm here to tell you how we can save millions of lives to my new venture, Social Genomics Moonshot. And we're doing that with the goal to prevent people from dying from diseases that we can cure, to creating access to life-saving information for all. And we aspire to build the world's largest community connecting patients, loved ones, and passionate scientists to help each other to find cures and accelerate medical breakthroughs. Because that will provide us the power to save millions of lives. So I'm here today to talk about how we're leading this fundamental transformation of access to healthcare and how you are part of that. So let me ask you this. Please all stand up. And sit down if you recognize yourself. Who of you knows someone suffering from a rare disease? Maybe in your family, a friend, a colleague at work. Please sit down. Who of you know someone suffering from cancer? Please sit down. And who of you know someone with an untreatable disease? Please sit down. Take a moment to look around you. That's almost everyone. So for those standing, please sit down. Thank you. <laughs> we all know the stories of people in the news who have been lucky. Lucky because they know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who has saved their life. However, in reality, many people are dying because they can't find the information that they need. Or they can't access or afford to take the actions that are necessary but those people, they could have survived too. If only they would have knew where to find the right information. I have listened to those stories since I was a little girl. I was born in a medical family. My father is a doctor specialized in genomics, and my mom a caring nurse. And every day when my father came home, he told me the stories, stories about young children and their parents, and typically people in their 30s and their 40s who then suddenly develop severe diseases, and the journey they need to go through to find a cure. And those stories, they were heartbreaking, because they were destroying entire families with a devastating impact. And there was one sentence that touched my heart. If only we had known, we could have prevented this. 
And then my father explained to me that with knowledge about genomics, we can save more lives. And at that time, I did not know yet, but solving this problem became my mission. So I first became a neuroscientist specialized in genomics, working at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute. And I was really determined to find one cure to solve one disease in the world. And I could easily proceed my career in the academia or get a well-paid job at a pharmaceutical company. But then I discovered the world of technology. And that was, for me, a game-changer. Because I thought, why not invent a system that we can integrate the knowledge about genomics with artificial intelligence to connect people to life-saving information? And that's exactly why I'm here today. And I want you to understand the roots of this problem. This is the situation today. It's pretty bad. There are 400 million people diagnosed with a rare disease whose doctor has most likely never seen their case before. Your disease also affects your family, so together we're worth 2 billion people searching for a cure. And here's the interesting fact. Rare diseases are caused by genetic mutations, so changes in our DNA, just like cancer. And according to the UK Cancer Institute, one out of five cancer patients is diagnosed with a rare cancer. That is 400 million patients on top of those 400. So if we count them in together with their families, we are with more than 4 billion people in the world searching for a cure. And not only are these people suffering, but it has a huge economic impact because they can't go to work, their loved ones can't go to work, and children's lives are impacted. And do you know that there are more than 10,000 diseases and that we only have treatments for 5% of all diseases. That means that 95% of all people already have their death sentence. And that's not all. Apart from the people, the patients who are searching, we have the, the pharmaceutical companies, the biotech and the universities, people who are working day and night on finding cures for these people through clinical trials. 85% of all clinical trials fails because they can't find the people they're trying to find a cure for. Do you realize what I'm saying? 85% can't find the people. So at the one hand, we have people in pain and they can't access the support and health care that they need. And at the other side, we have healthcare professionals spending billions on developing cures who can't find people. And the impact on people's lives are catastrophic. Because every day, in every country in the world, a boy and a girl is dying, dies because they can't access available, life-saving information. And if you are diagnosed with a disease, then you feel lonely, incredibly lonely and terrified. And there is no one you can connect with. Because your, your doctor has never seen it before, so how should you be able to find someone? And it is strange because maybe somewhere else in the world there is someone with exactly the same. Maybe there are a hundred people with exactly the same, so they can help each other. And people start frantically searching on the internet. Google becomes their best friend to search that needle in the haystack. And what we saw, people are dying because they can't find the answers. But maybe in a neighbor country or a country at the other side of the world, there is a treatment. And people want to help scientists to find a cure. But they you know that it is legally not even allowed to interact with each other. 
And then if you think this is not your problem, because you're living in the most developed country in the world, and you have access to the best healthcare system of the world, you are wrong. And if you like to believe that your doctor, no matter how hard they work, know everything, that if you will get a disease, he or she will log in, log in, in a, into a global system to see what's best for you from everything that's out there. You are wrong. And the point I want to make is that whether you're the richest billionaire on our planet, or the poorest, or whether you live in a big city, or in a rural areas, or survival chances depend on whether we will be able to find the information within the time we have. So being connected is so powerful. Two years ago, I founded the Human Genome Foundation, and I used all my savings to work on this crazy idea. For instead of connecting local uh, healthcare systems one by one, I start building the technical infrastructure of one global network to connect the patients, the loved ones, and the scientists. And people told me, well, this is insane. This is never going to work. I, I said, OK, well, let's give it a try and run an experiment. So I did. And we did a technical, technical feasibility study. And within a small community, uh, we tested it. And we work together with families who have been lucky. Families who have been able to connect with other families, with sick children in other parts of the world that had found a treatment that saved the life of their child. And we digitized this process. And then working with the engineers and, bio and, and uh, data scientists, we discovered that we actually have the technology already to do this. So then, OK, I started a medical study because I wanted to know the data model, whether it would be possible to use the medical knowledge together with the genetic sequencing to connect people to the kind of life-saving information that they need. And we found out that we can already start with a simple data model to connect people with the most rare diseases from different parts in the world to create meaningful connections to save lives. And the families, they were super motivated. So then next, together we went to the regular system. We started talking with the hospitals and with the pharmaceutical companies and the biotech. And it was mind-blowing to, to see that they all recognized the potential. They all said, well, this is the future. But it seems that everyone is afraid to start working on something they're not familiar with. So instead of working on a moonshot with a 100-year vision, people feel more comfortable to, to set up local initiatives that are labor-intense and super expensive to connect a few systems. And in some ways, it's understandable because the human brain is linear, while technology evolves exponential. But these are lost opportunities. And to give you an example, in the Netherlands, we have the best healthcare system of the world. But we spent the last five years, one billion, to connect the big university hospitals. Because two hospitals in the Netherlands are still not connected. To conclude, by the end of 2018, that they are still not connected. And we're talking about just eight hospitals. So, it failed miserably. And the more and more I listen to those stories, the more I believe that it would make much more sense to use some of those resources to build an entire new system that is focused on leveraging the power of those 4 billion people who are searching and start from there. And I truly believe that we can only create access to life-saving information for everyone across borders doing it this way. So that's why I keep continuing. And we're now launching a new project, and it's focused on brain cancer. 
It's a devastating disease. There are more than 300,000 cases each year, and survival chances are almost zero. There are some treatments, but there's no cure. So we want to connect them on a global level to help them to find a cure. And we thought starting with brain cancer is already a moonshot in itself. And with this brain cancer project, we're building a highly secure database, and we're collecting the stories of thousands of people, brain cancer survivors, patients, loved ones, with the ultimate goal to help them to find that one life-saving connection, or that somebody who knows somebody who can help them to save the life of their child. And we use our technology to connect them to other people in exactly the similar situation, so that together they can share experiments and they, they can support each other. And then we connect them as a group, so that people from the different parts in the world can all share life-saving information to make it available for everyone in that group. And then we connect them with passionate scientists so that they can accelerate the drug discovery. And if we do it this way, if we then have two girls with a rare brain cancer, like Anna from Amsterdam and Sophie from rural Spain, we can provide those girls the same opportunity to survive. Because maybe she, Anna, knows a doctor in the US who is working on an experimental medicine that can save Sophie's life. And their story can help another boy or girl somewhere else in the world. So this way, patients and their, their journey they go through leave a legacy. And we do the same thing with doctors, so that if doctors discover something, a breakthrough with the patient, they can share that within the network so that immediately everyone in a similar situation can access it. And of course, this is just the start. But with social genomics, we're entering an era of truly personalized medicine. And we're helping the drug discovery companies to solve one of the biggest problems they have. It's a $71.4 billion industry, and we're helping them to save time and money with the entire drug discovery process and patient recruitment. So let me ask you this. Why should we invest billions to connecting a few local systems if with a single system we can connect people and share life-saving information from everywhere. Being connected is essential to our humanity. Growing up, I saw my father come home and I saw the sadness in his eyes when he lost another patient. I felt bad for my father, but I also wondered about the family. And now I'm in a position to solve this problem. So our goal is to realize 1 billion life-saving connections by 2025 to eventually empower every patient on the globe to find their cure. I ask myself, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? Together, we can build a better future. Thank you.